Okay, so in this video, we will look at the idea of a demand function and of a supply function. So let me split this up into two sides. Because we have, as we're about to see, two realities. We have the reality of consumers and we have the reality of suppliers. Let's look first at the reality of consumers. So what we're interested in is the relationship between the number of units that consumers are willing to purchase, so X, with respect to P, the unit price of a given product. Now, of course, as the price of a product varies, X, the number of units that the consumers are willing to purchase, will vary as well. We will assume here, for simplicity, that we have a linear relationship between P and X. The one thing which is obvious is that it is a negative relationship. As the price decreases, well, consumers are willing to purchase, obviously, more units of the given product, and so we have a negative relationship. P given as a function of x. The higher the price, the fewer units consumers are willing to purchase, the lower the price, the larger number of units consumers are willing to purchase. So we have a negative relationship between the unit price and the number of units consumers are willing to purchase, and we call this function the demand function. Well, let's look at the same scenario, but now from the perspective of no longer consumers, but of suppliers. Again, we look at the relationship between the price of a single unit, and x now is the number of units that a supplier is willing to, of course, supply to the consumers. P as before is the price of a single unit. And of course, the relationship will be a positive one. Once again, we assume that we have a positive relationship between X and P. Well, if you think about this, the higher the price, the larger number of items are suppliers willing to supply to consumers, or willing to sell. So we have a positive relationship. Let's now say that P is G of X. The highest the selling price, the more units suppliers are willing to sell to consumers. And well, if this is called the demand function, in this case, looking at the suppliers, P equals G of X is called the supply function. So, the demand function is a negative relationship between the price of a single unit and the number of units that consumers are willing to purchase. The supply function is a positive relationship between, once again, the unit price, so the price of a single unit, whatever the product is, and X, the number of units that the suppliers are willing to sell to the consumers. And there is a very important uh, quantity that is related to both the demand function and the supply function, and that is the idea of an equilibrium point. And that's simply looking at the demand function and the supply function in the same graph. So suppose we look now as at a unique set of axes, so x and p, and we have the demand function, p equals f of x, a negative relationship, 
a negative relationship between x and p, and the supply function, which is a positive relationship between p and x. There is a, hopefully, a point of intersection between the supply and demand function, and if you think about this point, it is an interesting point. Let me say that x0 is the x value where both supply and demand functions meet, and p0 is the price where, once again, the demand and supply functions both meet. Why is this called an equilibrium point? Well, if you think about this, it's a very intuitive name because this is the point where a market has reached an equilibrium. For the given price P0, the number of units that consumers are willing to purchase and the number of units that suppliers are willing to sell to consumers is exactly the same. So when you have an equilibrium point, then you've reached a market equilibrium. So every single unit that is being put on the market by suppliers will be purchased by consumers. So there will be absolutely no leftover. And that is the idea of a market equilibrium point. And that's it.